What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we got round two with Megan of Vexed. Great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure is all mine. It's so great to talk to you. Last time I spoke to you, we were discussing a uh, Killing Culture. Still a fantastic album. I still spin it nowadays, almost two years later. And now we're getting Negative Energy, which is just as good, if not even better, in a way. The ultimate uh, follow-up. For uh, people who haven't heard the full album yet, though, do you feel like the singles that we got, such as Hope to Die and Anti-Fetish, is a good representation of what this whole album is going to sound like? Or like killing culture it's going to be more experimental and there's a lot more tricks and twists to discover i think it trying to pick the singles was really difficult because we were trying to pick ones that would encapsulate the whole album but i think there is so much to it that you've got hints of it but not the whole thing so um, i'm excited to see what people think when they hear the rest of it because there definitely are some surprises in there was the intention to kind of make like a sequel or just a continuation of killing culture or was this meant to almost signify like a new beginning for vexed definitely a new beginning yeah although like we absolutely you know we still have a lot of love for culling culture it's just like I don't know, we outgrew it quite fast. Um, and so for this album, we really wanted to just kind of put a new identity on ourselves and the music. And um, yeah, it took a while. It took a while to find that. But um, as soon as we did, it was became like, I would say, probably the easiest music we've ever written. Well, there's a lot of with the lyrical themes on here with, you know, opening up with a track like PTSD, but you're also, you know, talking about trauma euphoria as well as a mm -hmm. panic attack, which has a lot of emphasis on mental health. But then you have tracks that I feel like are more like, um, I guess, external in a way, whether it will be a track like uh, nepotism or extremist or something like that. It was there are a lot of both looking inward and looking outward for the making of this. Yeah, for sure. I think so much has happened over the last few years in my personal life, whether it be my personal beliefs or whether it be family situations, like people passing away, like there's been so much change when it comes to just day to day, normal life things. And then um, big things, you know, in, in our lives, in, in all our lives that, um, yeah, it's it's more of like a I would say like a realization, a coming of age, kind of turning into adults almost um, properly, finding ourselves again and um, writing music that really represents everything that we've gone through with this new mindset and this new attitude towards life and just an outlook as well. Was that sort of like a preconceived vision in a way of what you wanted this to sound like or was addressing this uh, personal aspect of your life a very personal and... or um? a very experimental process and a lot of trial and error. Oh yeah, the latter for sure. It was um, really difficult to start with because we kind of fell back into the old habits of trying to put positive spins and like silver linings on songs. And the reality was that I just couldn't write happy lyrics and I couldn't write positive uplifting melodies because it just wasn't feeling like it. And so we, you know, we did do quite a few songs to start with that were attempting to do that, but it didn't feel genuine and it just felt wrong. So we scrapped it all and started again. And this time we were just like, it's it's OK to just talk about how rough life can be and you don't have to give it a positive spin. The, the song in itself is the therapy. So, yeah, when we decided that we weren't going to try and put on a brave face, we were just going to let all the negativity like make the music that's when it was uh just suddenly became really easy and uh the writing process just just flooded out basically um you know i've all when it, I've, I've had this conversation with uh, plenty of artists before when it comes to you know addressing personal struggles or personal um darkness within their music it's obviously a great subject matter and can create a lot of catharsis but it can also i've said sometimes lead artists to being uh, victimized by their own product as i've said in a way mm -hmm. do you feel that maybe having to address personal traumas and personal personal struggles could be almost just as deteriorating as that as it can be cathartic in a way i think so i think it depends on the person type of person that you are i think for me personally if i bottle things up and pretend i'm okay 
it especially with my music it makes things 10 times worse for me i've i've always been a proper oversharer so i'm i'm learning to kind of rein it in a bit and find that happy medium of like letting it all out but not sort of you know showing every part of my vulnerability to the world so i think it, it is a double-edged sword perhaps like the right thing to do is to be honest and authentic because it'll make you feel better it'll make people connect to your art more but then obviously yeah you are at risk of uh constantly opening the wound but with everything that we went through the last few years i think it was important for us to be completely honest because again we never would have been able to write an album that we were so proud of otherwise how do you feel that this subject matter do you think this uh musically in a way did these ideas change with how the music itself was written and change like the sound because i do notice while it has all the rage and you know intensity of everything i loved about culling culture it also there was also a lot of different uh stuff that i haven't seen in vex before so did this subject matter maybe guide the hands with regards to how the music would sound as well yeah definitely i think when you are so so vulnerable and putting your whole sort of like heart into something without any um like without trying to hide anything it brings out a side of you that i think is the most creative you can ever be when you're being completely honest and vulnerable and so when we wrote that sort of bunch of songs before negative energy we were trying to um be like honest about what was happening but keep it very guarded so the songs were very culling culture-esque you know there was maybe a lot more technicality in the guitar and there was a lot more singing um but i didn't actually want to do any of that so when we were like oh scrap it let's just write really really heavy riffs and i'm going to scream most of the album um because it was authentic the songs just came out easily and yeah it created this new sound of i don't know just i suppose us just growing up i think it's a bit more mature and uh even though it's not going to win prizes for like the most technical album ever the whole never point know. of it is that it's songs that, that we love you know so yeah. you never yeah. know you never know um <laughs> did all of you kind of need to be in the same headspace emotionally was it like a lot of your bandmates kind of like putting themselves in your shoes in a way or maybe you putting yourself in the shoes of your bandmates in order to like understand the emotional aspects in a way or was it maybe better if you were all kind of in your own emotional head spaces because that helped you all equally express your individuality more so it was almost like so all of us are like we're incredibly close we talk every day we're all like best mates and me and willem obviously live together um so what we go through we kind of go through together even if it is just like something that's happened to them personally we all take it on um i think one of the things i love about this band is that we are each other's support system but obviously if you um are living and breathing your band every single day you can't escape it so much so it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing but um with this album me willem and jay decided to take over and do the writing um al our bassist took a step back because his his mental health was just suffering too much and so he decided to take a step back and he's come back in now for like the live shows but that was what he needed to do and then for me, Willem and Jay, we just took it all on equally and uh, we each knew what um, the other was going through. And so we just had each other's backs. And then if we needed to have a day where we were crying, we did that. If we needed to have a day where we were angry, we'd do that. And uh, yeah, we just we just pushed through as a team and, and got it done. And um, it definitely brought us so much closer together for sure. I and I find it almost in a way like ironic because you you're saying so much of your emotional elements on this like it's clearly a very personal uh, album and a very personal project but you also have a track title like we don't talk about it in a way as well so yeah. there is something I would say kind of ironic about it uh, and is like are you maybe trying to get the listener to sort of see things from your point of view or do you want to leave it vague enough to the point where maybe like it could still be very open to interpretation yeah i dip in and out of both i think because that song in particular is such a sensitive topic that i just leave enough 
that I think people can guess what it's about, but <laughs> like the song title, I'm never going to talk about what it's about. So I, it was a nice way of like me getting it out and the boys know what it's about and stuff like that. And if people can interpret it in a way that helps them or they like it, that's great. But um, yeah, it's a little bit of both. It's like me saying it without saying it. Um, and then hopefully other people can just take from it what they want. Um, and do you think that other people's interpretations of your music can um, maybe add like another layer of meaning or another layer of context that maybe wasn't there before uh, you released it in a way? Because I feel like uh, even with the last album, like tracks like Hideous or Fake or Misery, uh, like I feel like you're able to kind of with having just one word for each song on the album. I think it was ironic in that aspect, too, because one word, yet every song said so much. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, that a few other interviews I've had, people have pointed things out to me that are in the songs and um, things that I obviously, we obviously did on like a subconscious level and didn't even realize. So I think there are definitely things that people have picked up and um, pointed out that were subconsciously put in and we didn't even realize. But then if people can find their own meanings and interpretations and share them and it brings people together, I think that's always a positive thing, you know? I mean um art and music is so subjective but so long as somebody's getting something good out of it even if if it's on a deep level that's great but even if it's just having fun in a mosh pit that's great too so mm -hmm. if people can take something away from it and ultimately it brings in enjoyment like that's that's all we can hope for really as a band of course of course and um it when it comes to like the negative energy uh pun intended or not <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh you know like Obviously, nobody likes to feel the darkness that initially inspired the idea in a way. And anybody who tells me I don't care what cult Norwegian black metal or whatever you play, nobody likes to feel that negative co negativity no. constantly. But when you do have to, you know, start playing these songs live again and bringing them in a setting, do you almost kind of have to revisit those emotions or you kind of have to, like, find a way to bring that negative energy back without it necessarily being traumatic? It depends on the song and it just depends on the day. Like sometimes we'll be playing them and it's almost like I've got my, like, I don't know, like superhero mask on. That's how I, I, the only way I can describe it is like, you kind of go into like a, almost like a character or a persona. You're still yourself, but you're like the best version of yourself. You're the most, like you're the bravest version or the most confident version of yourself um, when you're performing. But then sometimes if I've had a bad day or if, or if the song is just hitting in a different way and I'll kind of let the crack show a bit, it can be really tough. Like there's a track on the album called It's Not The End and I, I love that song so much, but I'm also half dreading performing it live because I'll have to be really, um, I don't know, really stern with myself and be like, do not cry before, <laughs> before I start it. Um, Cause that will be a tough one to get through. But it just depends on the day usually i'm okay and i can just get through it and uh i just see it as another way of kind of letting out the emotion and it's almost like therapy it's sort of like a cathartic feeling um but yeah i will admit sometimes i i do get a bit like caught up in it and overthink it and uh it can be tough sometimes well, I've always said that art is life and it can grow and develop after you bring it into the world. It could even sometimes eventually die in a way. Do you think that maybe these songs, despite some of them having a negative foundation in a way, maybe they can grow and develop to have something positive uh, behind it? And maybe the and maybe like, you know, obviously we never forget the trials and tribulations that we struggle through. But do you think that maybe these songs could almost represent something positive in a way where like... Um, maybe performing them won't always have negative associations yeah for sure um the whole album in itself is very much about like the grieving process you know it, it's not a conceptual album by any means but i think that was the basis of it um and so i think up while we're sort of performing them live the longer we do it for it'll almost be like the grieving process and it'll get to like that acceptance stage so i think um you know, therapy is very expensive over here. So I think us being able to just perform it over and over will actually be kind of our version of therapy. And uh, hopefully we'll get to the acceptance bit at some point and be able to perform them um, in a completely different mindset.
Yeah, I can totally relate to therapy uh, being uh, uh, not uh, not <laughs> yeah. in a way. You know, it's funny. This is sort of like um uh, uh I don't want to say like debate in a way because but like I've noticed that like a lot of times I, I've heard uh when uh Doc Coyle uh from Bad Wolves and God forbid actually said this where like sometimes we uh take tortured artists and put them on a pedestal in a way like there's a difference between somebody being a suffering artist and somebody who just happened to suffer and make art at the same time. Mm -hmm. So like, do you think that sometimes in a way, like when we say it's so cool, you know, this d very manic depressive person made this sick art, it's almost kind of like maybe exploiting like uh, in a way, like I don't maybe an illness or almost kind of like maybe not as glorifying as we said, like, I mean, v Vincent Van Gogh, he was a maddening artist, but let's be real. Like, what he struggled through is not exactly something we should aspire to be, you know? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like, I mean, look at artists like Amy Winehouse, for example, like classic example of, you know, somebody who was in so much mental pain, um, at, but people just worshiped her for being this suffering artist. And obviously she was incredible, but that ended in the worst way possible. And so, I think it is important to realize that if there is an artist that's sharing these vulnerabilities, it's not a fashion statement. It's not, um, it's not something that they walk around with feeling proud of. Like these songs in this album, we're so proud of the music, but the content that it's about is still with us every day. It's still very much a real life day to day struggle or grievance or something that causes us a lot of stress and you know, damage. And I would never want to be praised for just like being able to be openly, I don't know, depressed mm. because it's not something I want to promote. But what I do want to kind of get across is that it's important to talk about these things. It's important to be open about them and share them with people um, as much as you want to. So, yeah, I think the whole sort of like suffering, struggling artist thing is is very romanticized and it can be really dangerous it's not really a good example to set to like younger people i think either yeah um but it is important for for people to know that it's okay to struggle and that everybody does go through it um and you've just got to put your focus into something better you know it's funny and uh when i was in art school like there was unfortunately like people had this false rule in a way where like if, if I want to make it as an artist, I have to suffer. And I went to a art school in New York City with a bunch of rich kids who, you know, oh like, yeah, like, did it necessarily have to, you know, they weren't living hand to mouth in a way. So they were part of them. Yeah. But so there was an ongoing conversation we had with people like, do we feel like we deserve to be artists in a way because we didn't, you know, suffer, you know, we didn't suffer through the addictions of this artist or suffer through the illness of those artists or suffer through the poverty of that artist, you know? The thing is, I think, is people love like a, an underdog story. Like, so they try and create these almost um, movie-like storylines of how this person was down and, and out and on their luck and they, they pursued through and achieved all their goals no matter what. But the reality is life is shit enough. You don't need to add to it. Like, no matter what sort of... Um, life you're born into at some point you're gonna go through struggles obviously some people far worse than others but there's going to be trials and tribulations of lo in life and things that will inspire art you know nobody i don't think has ever been born and you know lived a full life when nothing bad has ever happened to them um so you know if, and if you can't find inspiration because your life is so brilliant and wonderful go help others who are in need you know go find that pain and that inspiration i suppose from helping other people who aren't as lucky as you you know i bet those those rich art artist kids in your uh uni probably never thought about actually maybe i should go out and you know talk and help the the poor people in new york or um the homeless people or the black community you know um like that if you really want to see and get inspired by things that are awful 
you've only got to walk outside your door and go find somebody in need of help, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah. and, and a lot of them, like, and a lot of them have, and a lot of them have, and I'm not uh, good, discrediting good. that in a way, but like there would be some, like, I, I saw people who were like, who would like drink a bottle of vodka a day, like on purpose thinking like, like almost punishing themselves thinking like I need to feel this darkness. Otherwise I can't be an artist. I'm like, I mean like that's like, you know, like, that's and, silly. and, and yeah. it's funny you mentioned that too, because you're, you're right. I think like people get obsessed with like a movie, like struggling story in a way where mm -hmm. like, you know, you know, like, one of my favorite movies of all time, like Remember the Titans, like you don't have to, if you want to be a professional football player, you don't have to have the same exact experiences, nor are you going to be able to as those people did in a way. Yeah. Or, you know, like one of my favorite movies based on an artist, Pollock, you know, you don't have to be a alcoholic uh, domestic abuser in order to make it as an abstract artist. So it, it's really funny exactly. you mentioned that. I think like, I don't, I'm not the type of person who likes to blame art or movies or music for like the reason why people do stupid things. But I think it does sometimes make people think like, oh, it's just like that. I have to do exactly what they did in a way. There's a difference between being inspired yeah. and being a clone, I guess you could say. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think people take things very literally, um, which is sad, you know, I think if somebody feels like they have to get to that point in order to create great art, then, um, you know, the problem is lying with that person, sadly. And hopefully they get the help they need. But, um, yeah. yeah, I totally agree. Uh, don't need to take things so literally. You can just take inspiration from that in itself. Yeah. Or maybe somebody thinking that that is the case could be their suffering story in a way. We can go down a rabbit hole that would yeah, cut true. into your entire <laughs> press day. Um, um, Chicken and the egg yep. situation. But, uh, and I have a few more questions for you, but depending if the music is coming from a personal story or if there is like observation involved in your lyrics and it is coming from an external source, is it almost a different energy when you're performing or singing that song in a way? Is it almost like you're uh, t is it almost feel like you're expressing something very different, like a different side of you? Yeah, I think when I'm writing uh, lyrics and recording them, um, it's really difficult. Like just just on like an emotional level, I find it very hard to open up even to myself because I don't like being vulnerable in front of people, bizarrely, um, even though it, my music would suggest otherwise in my day-to-day -day life you know I, I always put on a brave face and so um yeah it's it's weird when i'm writing and recording it's really difficult i i do struggle to kind of get the emotion out and be be honest with myself but then as soon as i'm performing them um it's like just a switch and it's like my confidence goes up and i kind of just feel empowered by being there and wherever I am and being on a stage and just you know telling people how shit things have been I don't know why <laughs> you'd think it would have the opposite effect but um it, yeah I find that when we're performing I just I get this strength and um I in almost enjoy the the fact that I'm talking about these things um I suppose that's just what live music does to you but um yeah it, it's weird it's Nothing is simple when it comes to music, like... It shouldn't be. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy how it makes you feel. Yeah. Well, um, when I interviewed Vili Valo uh, earlier in the year, he said, like, the songwriting process is never something that takes something away from you, in a way, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, true. Yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, is kind of going into your live presence. We talked about it a little bit before, but, like... Because every show is different, you know, every day is different. We always learn more and more about ourselves every day. So with every single live show, are you almost like maybe, does it feel almost like you're trying to replicate, make every single show in a way the same? Or being that, you know, we grow and develop as humans every single day, like every show does feel drastically different despite it having a routine? Yeah, I think it does feel different. Um, whenever you're like touring or playing a show with new music it's almost like learning to walk again like you have to figure out how each song makes the band feel and also how it makes the crowd feel you know crowds obviously respond to songs differently and you know some cities we go to 
a song will be going down amazingly well and then the next day it won't be one that gets particularly much reaction so i think yeah every show is different and you kind of have to read the room as best as possible and just try and connect with people ultimately you know even though you're sort of step back on a on a stage um just connecting with people and knowing that they're there and they're listening and they're hearing even if they don't know that they're directly hearing all the things that you've gone through um making that connection is really important for me anyway mm -hmm. um so yeah i think just figuring out you know how the crowd of feet is feeling and um talking to them like you're talking to one person at a time is really important and uh, obviously we do have routines and like we're trying to get our stage show as badass as possible like we're trying to step it up a gear but um ultimately i think when somebody in between songs can stop and just talk to their crowd like human beings and normal people that's the kind of show that i enjoy the most so that's what we're trying to do is that something you can necessarily rehearse in a way because i could tell just you know I, I have yet to see vex live and hopefully that changes but like is that almost something you can practice in a way or rehearse is like connecting with the crowd and like engaging with them in a way like or does that just come naturally i don't, I don't think it is like I'll sometimes make like notes in my head of if I'm having a day where I cannot talk to people and nothing's coming out, I'll be like, okay, in this section, talk about what the song's about, or in this section, talk about when the next single's dropping. But I tend to just kind of, I don't know, again, just read the room and just see how people are feeling, see how people are responding and um, just see if I can make a connection. And if, if it's a crowd that don't want that and they just want you to pump them up and do mosh pits and stuff, that's great as well. So yeah, yeah I, I don't know if you can rehearse that. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, I don't know. I'd be interested to know how the people do though. Yeah. There is one band, I won't mention their name, but uh, whenever they do play, uh, I don't partake in this because it would land me in the hospital, but I do know people who get a bunch of shots ready and they do a shot every time they say, circle pit, circle pit, circle really? pit. <laughs> so yeah you'll be some, seeing some bands yeah 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 and my, my friends will be seeing more circle pits on the front man at any time as soon <laughs> um so uh and and also it, i kind of because there are some performers who don't who are fairly static on stage and that actually helps too like you know like um mm -hmm. circling back to billy valo again he doesn't talk at all between the songs he just goes from one song no. to the next he stands very still but there's something beautiful and engaging about that too so i think it depends yeah. on the band for sure like if you've got a presence like he has and i can think of quite a few other bands who whose front person like doesn't talk to the crowd but because their stage presence is either like a bit scary or um almost like all consuming it doesn't matter but i think it just depends on each performer and each band like there's some bands um one of my favorite bands a bit controversial but they're king 810 and They're David awesome. Gunn never, he never talks to the crowd really, but he's such a scary man that watching him on stage perform is enough. Yeah. Like the presence that he brings, it's like, wow. Like this is like watching uh, a bull to a red flag, you know, it's, it's quite spectacular. He doesn't need to talk. <laughs> I, I, I saw them live uh, twice and uh that is because uh, the first time i saw them their lights were in a way where you can't really see him either mm -hmm. but i didn't need to see that band live to get goosebumps when i first heard alpha and omega and like oh, i sound like so this good. because the devil has my throat the way that he just yeah. said that that was just yeah. goosebump inducing you have i remember you telling me like i remember you telling me you were inspired by cardi b my chemical romance and king 810 you have a great uh great uh <laughs> diverse taste i must say so thank you thank yeah. you <laughs> did you see uh mcr on the reunion tour i remember we left off at that at the last uh, interview did you uh, i didn't but my little sister did um she's only 13 bless her and she's already an emo so i'm very proud of her um, so she went to go see them and uh, she reported back saying they were amazing. So that was really sweet for her because I have seen them live, but not since they uh, got back together. So four I was times. gutted, but at least she got to see. Four, oh, four times at that reunion. I was covering the festival that they were playing at. So, but yeah, yeah but uh, four times on their reunion, oh. it was incredible. Oh. So.
Yep. Oh, so yep. Amazing. yep. And I interviewed a uh, Charlie from as everything unfolds, um, the same, like around the same time I interviewed you last time and around the same time this time. And we kind yeah. of picked up that, uh, sim similar conversation. Yep, exactly. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. It was such an excellent part too. Is there just some, anything else with vexed that you would like to promote with the release of negative energy, maybe a U.S. tour in the works finally? Oh, fingers crossed. Uh, we keep getting messages asking people to uh, for us to come out there. And honestly, I, that would be a dream come true. So we just need a big American band to want to take us out there. So just to anybody who wants us out there, pester some other bands. Um, King, but 810. Just, you know, uh, King 810. King 810, do it. <laughs> um, but Negative Energy, the new album drops on the 23rd of this month. So if you want to go listen, please do. And just thank you to everyone and anyone who's waited around for the second album because it's been a long time coming and um, we know it was a long wait, but the fact that there's still people there ready to listen is amazing and we're just so grateful, so thank you. Yeah, we're very grateful that you gave us an album that many people needed at this time and I think we'll relate and touch many people, so. Thank you. Anytime. Everybody, we are here with Vexed Negative Energy out June 23rd. Be sure to pick that up. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.